Okay, so in the past, uh, in the last two uh, pieces of lecture, I introduced uh, this method of uh, which is called the Laplace's method. Uh, now I will move to an extension of that method to complex functions, which we call as the method of steepest descent. But before I go to that formally, let me sort of uh, tell you that why such uh, sort of analysis would be necessary. You know, let me motivate that by telling what are we, what kind of uh, integrals. Let me once more remind you that if we have integrals like this, that I have contour integrals f of z e to the power of x, some g z dz, and I am interested in x large, then approximately this goes to some form like that. Uh, what is that form that I am interest uh, is what I am interested in or and uh, uh, this kind of integral uh, where does it arise is the question I am posing. So, as I have said many many special functions, special functions that you encounter in mathematical physics or you know in your mathematical description of physical systems. Uh, there the functions actually often satisfy differential equations and the solutions of these functions comes as complex integrals. Okay. I will give you examples just in one minute and those complex integrals then uh, one wonders that if a particular uh, uh, you know constant there like x becomes very large what happens to that uh, function in the large x limit, which we call as the asymptotic limit of such special function. So, the f uh, here is an example you can see that I have what is called a Hankel function. Now, this Hankel function is related to Bessel functions when in the next semester we will be doing um, differential equations, you will be seeing uh, how these kind of functions uh, where do they come from. But for now, you note that this function is formally defined as an integral, you see and a contour integral. In the complex plane, this is an integral going all the way from 0 to what I have written infinity e to the power of i pi. Infinity e to the power of i pi means uh, the position goes to infinity and the e to the power i theta that theta goes to pi you will agree right, this is from 0 to pi you have gone. So, e to the power of i theta and the r, r is infinity e to the power of i theta, theta is pi. So, that is why it is written like that. So, along this curve if you go, you, ha you are integrating this object. Now, compare this object with whatever I was writing on the board. What you have as an fz is z to the power nu plus 1. What you have as a gz is z minus 1 by z divided by 2 that you can call as gz and let us say x is a real number. Okay. So, thus you see we have an integral very similar to the general form that I was mentioning earlier and if one says that I want to know the value of the Henkel function as x becomes very large, that is called the asymptotic form of the Henkel function and it looks like this. It is 1 by square root x multiplied by e to the power of i x minus some constant. Now, e to the power of i x minus constant means it is a cosine, it is an oscillatory thing. So, cosine x minus constant plus i, sin, uh, I um, uh, x minus a constant. So, it is an oscillatory function of x whose amplitude is decaying with x like 1 by square root x. That is a very famous behavior of Hankel function. Now, uh, there is a second function I have written here, Aries function. It is represented as a contour integral like this in complex plane coming somewhere from uh, you know this corner in the second quadrant and uh, going to the other corner in the third quadrant. Why this kind of angular approach that you can learn later uh, from um, in the next semester. Uh, that how such integrals for Airy function arise and, uh, but it is a complex integration as you can see the path is this blue path gamma 3 that is written here along this gamma 3 path 
and uh, what you have here is some x z minus z cube by 3. So, if you take x common you will be left with z minus z cube by 3 x, uh, but that you can call as some g z your f z here is 1 and then at large x it turns out Aries function has this kind of formula. Uh, gamma function is yet other very famous function all of you or the factorial function I am sure in your undergraduate also you have come across this and many a times people would have said there is a Starling formula for large x gamma function looks like this. If you have seen this formula well and good if you have not seen no problem, but uh, question is how where does such Starling formula arise from? It turns out that this gamma function integral can be written if you just scale this t as x z then you can rewrite it in this way where again you are seeing that you are left with an integral which is x times some g z and this time the contour is just the real uh, axis okay, from uh, 0 to uh, so this, this point is let us say 0 and you are going from 0 to infinity. Okay. So, uh, this kind of integrals does you see are very natural and the question is that when x is large how come such an integral has reduced to a Starling's formula. We would like to know all these uh, sort of mathematical steps by which you come from uh, this kind of formula to here, this kind of formula to here, this kind of formula to here and that is what we will do in the next. Uh, two uh, sort of uh, lectures uh, today uh, and uh, um, in the next uh, you know session also thank you